That's right. You guys, you ready? Just ready. Okay. Is there a phrase that your spouse often uses in the wrong context? That's a good question. Uh, she, uh, she's like the old Norm Crosby, <laughs> who made a living as a comedian butchering the English language. Miss K will butcher the English See? language quickly. My leg, I mean, they said, uh, you know, uh, they did an autopsy on my leg, and I said, uh, what? They said an autopsy on my leg, but they're going to treat it with natural glycerin. I think it's going to be all right. I said, so I your leg has died, and now so they're going to blow it off your body. I said, Miss K, you're mispronouncing words. It and that's is what funny. Talk, he teases me about every this day. This woman will butcher the English language in a heartbeat. Well, it's funny. From the 70s to today, they went from fighting each other to fighting for each other and learning to be happy, 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 as Phil says. This is Straight Talk from Phil and Kay Robertson and the continuation of our journey from dysfunction to dynasty. We're in the world! one little small thing that you do that can annoy each other? Oh. Annoys each other? Yes, sir. I'll go first. Miss K doesn't get, in, get on my nerves. <laughs> well. I've learned to live with you. You I don't get on my nerves. Well, you don't get on my nerves except when he turns the TV too loud, right? Yeah. And he won't even let me talk on the phone. Miss <laughs> hey. K claims the first time she ever laid her eyes on me, it was at, at, the, at the high this. school where we attended. I was one year ahead of her. I come around the curve there in the hallway. And my cousin, my third cousin, was with me, old Ronnie Festivan. And he had a crew cut, and I knew he was an athlete. He's a quarterback, I knew that. But this, that look, and he was laughing. And I just looked at him and I thought, that's the one I want, right there. That's it. There you go, but, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all have to remember, I've been running with this thing since she was about 14 years old. Yeah. 14, now we're in our 70s. Used to with sex, 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 we gotta have sex out. And we got all fired up. But then you get in your 70s and you say, what about it, honey? You say, well, let's, let's just go popcorn tonight. And so, A&W. So you eat popcorn. And A&W root beer. And A&W root beer. And A&W root beer. <laughs> Sex is not over when you get in your 70s. It's just not like a, what would you say, Miss Kay, a priority. No, being best friends is the best. There you go. We just talk, talk, talk. I think when you're best friends, that's what you do. That's the one you want to tell stuff to. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, if you get those mugs and just put them in the freezer and put that root beer, oh, it's so good, isn't it? It is. With the popcorn. <laughs> I tell the women now that I talk to all the time, you've got to use your sense of humor, too. If you don't have one, go to Walmart and get one because you can't make a marriage work without a sense of humor as far as we're concerned. Yeah. I mean, there's so many times when we started off and we're getting mad and then I might say something funny and then Phil starts laughing. Well, you see, you've killed the mad. I mean, it's just gone. And we've done that so many times and we try to teach other people how to do that. Think about something. Is it that important to have a big knockdown drag out? Or you can think of something funny and then everybody laughs and you're all over it. We've done that years in a row. Yep. Have only good advice, Miss K. <laughs> well, you live and learn. You, you, you can't try to convince people they need to behave if you and your woman are doing the very thing that you're telling them they shouldn't do. Therefore, uh, when you stand on the gospel, you uh, stand up for Jesus. You tend to stand out among the world's population. So. We, we don't have any mischievous behavior going on down there around the Robertson household. Before I came to Jesus, ha, 
so now Amen to that. I have put into practice love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So once those things, the qualities, the fruit of the Spirit are seen by your neighbors and the people you meet. And your kids. And your kids. When they see that, they're like, let's see, when they should be mad, they're not. When they could be war, there's peace. <laughs> if uh, instead of out of control, eh, they exercise self-control. And now I'm in my 70s, I get it now. Love God, love your neighbor. And here we are with the woman I've been running with since she was 15, 14. Yep. Okay, you're a good woman. I'm glad I run up on you. I'm glad I had a lot of patience. Yeah. My grandmother taught me that. When I was a little girl, I stayed with my grandmother because we had a grocery store. And we would sit in the swing and my grandmother would be shelling peas or shucking corn. And she told me one thing that I'll never forget. You're only going to marry one time and you don't even you don't even pretend like you know about the word divorce cuz you're with him so you better choose wisely is what she told me and she said because you'll have to fight for your marriage and i was like what would i have to fight for she said because satan's going to come after it just like he does everything and she said but you have to fight and you have to say to him nope this is i've i vowed to God to take him forever, and I will. And that's exactly what happened. And Satan did come in. Within a year of us being together, he, he made his presence known. And, and that, you know, 10 years, he was a jerk. But now he's the most godly man, and he's gentle. And people don't even know how good he is because he only shows me his best character the real gentleness that he has. I'm gonna love you all my life I'm gonna love you all my life The world may rearrange The colors they may change I tell him I love him every day, don't I? Yeah, when she gets in the bed, <laughs> I go at 10 o'clock. She rolls in there about 12:31, but she reaches over there. She finds my hand and she squeezes my hand. And you squeeze it back. And then I squeeze her back, and That's then. Right. And it's under a pillow because every of, night. Yep. I think that's really cute, too, that he thought of that. I thought of it, and he joined me. I'm gonna love you all my life. The problem was I didn't really have any answers for all the voices. I said, if I tell you this, you're gonna divorce me. And he said, if you're not honest with me, I'm gonna divorce you anyway. I'd finally hit rock bottom, and I wrote a letter, and I was going to do it. I really was. My heart just starts beating out of my chest. My dad said, son, are you ready to change? 